The recommended method for setting up a live hosting environment is to either use a top-level domain such as .com, .org, .gov, etc., or to use a subdomain where you would use a differentiating word prior to the top-level domain. However, there may be a time that you find yourself in need of deploying your locally developed site to a subdirectory instead. A subdirectory installation is when you have created an installation in a directory beneath your top-level domain. While desktop server's direct deploy method can work in these instances, it requires that the live site directory structure is identical to that of your local environment and that WordPress is installed in the top-level domain. Sometimes this is not the case, and if you find yourself in this situation, then this video is for you. Here we have created a locally developed website, and this will be the site we will be using as our example for this video. Because a cPanel host is the most common, we will be utilizing it as our example. However, in most cases, the steps you will need to follow will be similar, and this video should be enough of a guide to get you through. Start by going to your web host cPanel or dashboard and look for the WordPress one-click installation. This will install all necessary files and create the corresponding database. With most hosts, this typically takes just a few minutes. However, there are some hosts which can take up to 24 hours for WordPress to be installed. Many times, the WordPress one-click install script is created by a third-party developer. If needed, read through their terms and agree, and then, if applicable, click on the Install button. Different scripts on different hosts might lead to an installation information screen that might not mimic the one you see here. However, the information it will require is generally the same. If you have more than one domain on your host, choose the top-level domain under which you would like the subdirectory to reside. This can typically be selected through a drop-down menu on the installation screen. Next, select the directory in which you would like your WordPress installation to reside. If the directory already exists, you might get an error, so it is generally a good idea to name a directory that does not already exist. Most hosts will create a random name for your database, or you can elect to create your own database name if you like. For the purpose of this video, we will leave it as is. For security purposes, it is considered best practice to use a unique database table prefix. In the case of this example website, the local site used a prefix of WPNT underscore. It is absolutely vital that the prefix on the live site matches the prefix on your local site. If you are unsure of the prefix assigned to your local site, you can easily find this by opening up your wp-config.php file in a text editor and looking for the dollar sign table underscore prefix equals entry. The wp.config file is located in the root of your local WordPress installation. Create a username and password for your WordPress installation. This is temporary as once you have deployed your site, the username and password you created on your local WordPress installation will overwrite that of this installation. Enter your email address and then click Install. Once again, your host may vary slightly. WordPress will now either be queued up for installation or installed immediately depending on your host. Generally, you will see a progress indicator and will be notified when installation is complete. As an added measure, it is a good idea to verify that your installation is behaving as expected, as we see here. Go to the file manager located in your cPanel. If your host does not have a file manager in its dashboard, you can also utilize an FTP program to accomplish this next step. However, it will take a little longer. Select the top level or subdomain in which your subdirectory installation was created to go to your document root. Once the file manager opens up, navigate to the subdirectory in which your WordPress installation resides and delete the wp-content directory. Start Desktop Server and, if prompted, start Apache and MySQL services. Click Next. From the main menu, select Export, Import, or Share a Website, then click Next. Select Export or Deploy a WordPress website, then click Next. Select the local website that you wish to deploy from the top drop-down menu. 
In the Export As field, enter the name of the top level or subdomain only. Do not enter your subdirectory information here as this field does not allow for anything other than alphanumeric characters. We will take care of the subdirectory shortly. Click Next. Leave the database information fields blank and click Next. If desired, enter the name of the archive in the file name field and browse to your desired local file location. Determine whether you wish to encourage search engine visibility and purge post revisions. Now be certain to place a check mark next to Customize Scrubbing Options. This is necessary in order for you to make the change necessary for your site to work in a subdirectory. After clicking Next, Desktop Server will analyze your database and files to determine which entries need to be replaced with the new domain information. Because you selected Customize Scrubbing Options in the previous step, once Desktop Server returns its results, you now have the option to edit the entry. Select the entry that shows the domain or subdomain and then click Edit. In the Replace With field, add a forward slash and the subdirectory name to the end of the line. It is mandatory that this is a forward slash as a backslash will not work. The forward slash is located on the bottom right and shares the question mark key on most QWERTY style keyboards. Also note that if you are on a Unix host, case sensitivity is also considered. Click OK and then click Next. Desktop Server will now create your archive file. Scrubbing your database and files and replacing the local host entries with the new URL can take a few seconds to a few minutes depending on the size of the site and number of entries that need to be changed. Once finished, click Next. Once your archive has been created, Desktop Server will display a clickable link to the file. Click on this link to open the file. Click on the archive and then, within the archive, click on the domain name of the live host. Within this directory, you will find a file called database.sql. Extract this file from your .zip archive and note the location in which you stored the extracted file. Open up your FTP program and navigate to the subdirectory in which your WordPress installation is contained. While still in your FTP program, open the local directory in which your .dev site is stored. Navigate to the root of your WordPress installation and initiate a transfer of your wp-content directory. Once again, the number and size of the files you have will determine the amount of time it takes to completely transfer the wp-content directory. In order to save time, and because watching files being transferred is, in general, boring, we have accelerated this portion of the video considerably. Now it's time to return to your host's cPanel or dashboard. Navigate to the database section and click on PHP My Admin. Click on the database name in the left-hand column that corresponds with the database that was created when you did the one-click install. If you've forgotten this information, you can find it easily by opening up your wp-config.php file located on your live host in the root of the subdirectory in which WordPress was installed. Look for the line of code that says define parentheses db underscore name and use the name of the database that is in between the single quotes. Once you have opened the database that corresponds to your live site, click on the option to check all. This will select all tables in the database. Next, you will select the option to drop all the tables. Confirm deletion of the tables and wait for confirmation of table deletion. Click on the import tab at the top of your browser. Click on browse and navigate to the database.sql file that we extracted from the archive you created earlier. Once the database file has been selected, click Go. Your database will now be imported and can take a while depending on the size of your database. Now that you have imported your database, your site deployment should be complete. Verify that the site is working and then, as always is good practice, log into your WordPress dashboard and resave your permalinks. Thanks for watching. We hope that you have found this video tutorial to be useful. Our goal is to make software that not only saves you time, but makes your life a lot easier. 
If you have suggestions for future video tutorials, please feel free to let us know. Also, we'd appreciate it if you'd follow us on Twitter and Facebook.